Welcome, friends, this afternoon session of our monthly meeting. I believe Jonathan told me there are a few questions you have written up for me. I'll try to take up a few questions. Not a few. <laughs> Today, we have many. So only yes or no answers, okay? No. <laughs> how do I know how I am progressing in meditation and my seeking for Satch Khan? Progress on the spiritual path can be noticed in two ways. One, internally, and second, externally. Internally, you notice when you have inner experiences, when you can withdraw your attention and discover that you are not your body, you are more. Those personal discoveries are a sign of progress and growth. And the more you have these experiences, the more convinced you are that you are on the right track. There is a certain stage. If you are initiated by a perfect living master, even at the first stage, you come to see your master inside. What form you have seen of the master outside, the same form appears inside. And you can gradually stabilize that form and talk to the master and have all your answers given from inside, from your master, and that's a good progress to have the radiant form of the master. It has been mentioned that the form inside is called the radiant form. And some people have mistaken notion that the radiant form will mean that there are some lights radiating out of the master. That is not true. Radiant form only means a form that can be seen even in total darkness. Everything can be seen in total darkness with your imagination. You can close your eyes, cover them completely and imagine something you can see. So the inner planes from where imagination is coming is itself a radiant form and therefore everything that you see there does not require outside light to fall upon it. And that is why the form is called the radiant form. So when you see the form, don't look for a different form. Similar form and when you can stabilize it, which is done by repeating the words a master gives by way of a mantra or simran or word to repeat, which are empowered when the master initiates you with the power to prevent your mind from bringing any negativity. So the mind cannot even make up that form, that face, if you are repeating those words. So there is a safeguard. that Are you really talking to your master or just an imaginative figure by your mind? There is a safeguard for that in initiation itself. So when you are able to have that personal meeting with master inside, big sign of progress. After that, you travel inside with the master. It's not a journey, solitary journey at all. Unlike many other finds of, uh, types of spiritual practices, you have to go it alone. Here you develop a friendship with a human being who is enlightened and you are with that human being both outside and inside. And that's a good stage to be in, a good progress. If you see more things that the master can show you inside, more progress is being made. So the internal experiences are always a good sign of good progress you are making on the spiritual path. The external signs are that more coincidences will happen in your life where you will see this is not probable what happened, improbable master's hand must be in it. Things, So many coincidences will start being noticed by you which you never noticed before. So that's a sign of progress also. Your own temper will change with meditation and with spiritual growth. You will not feel angry. You will not get provoked angry easily. And gradually you will not get angry at all. If you want to get angry, you will have to try very hard. And sometimes you won't even succeed because I tried once very hard to be angry and I started laughing in the middle. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't work. I'm not a good actor, I find. Therefore, anger, lust, greed, these are things which are normal for us and they are normal functions of the mind and designed to pay off our karma. We have to get through these experiences. They are part of it. But the experiences will look like they are still there, but you will not feel them. That's a sign of progress. So there are a lot of external signs. 
you will also see in coincidences you will meet people who will be helping you in whatever you are doing and that will not be happening earlier you will be able to distinguish between what did not happen earlier what's happening now external signs but the biggest change will be in your own attitude toward everything you will know this is just a show temporary show you will look upon this world like a drama you are watching you are actually watching a drama what happens is that we are watching the drama from the third eye center we are wearing a costume for a certain reason the reason for wearing the costume is that the drama could be seen from a distance like we go and see a movie we see a movie from the audience the screen is far away from us here we are willing to put ourselves in one of the characters and we are therefore watching very closely it doesn't matter which character you put yourself in so you have just placed yourself as a spectator of the show into the head of one of the characters but after time because you are a good character you uh, you act very well you forgotten that you are not really the actor you are only wearing a costume of an actor and doing a part exactly according to the script your thinking mechanism in the head is going strictly according to the script already pre-trained in your mind you cannot go depart from it the decisions you make they are all pre-programmed the way you think and decide which is good which is not good how to do it pre-programmed but you think you are the character then it all becomes different and you become make this your own reality otherwise at any one time you could say i am watching my show from there and if if you are making progress it becomes easier to do that then you can just enjoy the show you just happen happen to be close to the drama stage because you are in one of the characters and that character is the name you are given to your costume to your body that's not your name that's the name of the character now when people uh, i told you create your own show they think the human being is creating the show you can't do anything human being can't create much they say how can he create the whole show but the one who is sitting inside is creating the whole show so you can't say i am creating the show and calling yourself by your name given to your body but if you say the one in me who is wearing this body who is wearing this mind is creating the show correct statement which is truth you find out that truth through meditation so it is all different types of experiences you will have showing progress in meditation so is that yes or no yes <laughs> yes in advance to all the questions <clears throat> what exactly is the pull of the plm how do we differentiate it from attractiveness experience towards non plm or plm whose list one might not be how can this pull be described can you please elaborate on the pull of the plm the pull of the plm is coming from unconditional love is the same love we have for people the love is always the same there is no change in love only confusion takes place when we call attachment as love love is love in love the mind does not function it's not a thinking process when you think it's attachment when you don't think it's spontaneous intuitively coming it's love the pull of the perfect living master is that there is no condition attached no judgment involved it's a very amazing thing that we pass a judgment on ourselves maybe i am too bad maybe my karma is not good maybe i did too many bad things will master still love me he will love you the same how come my master will love me when my karma is so bad and i am not a good person well the master not looking how good or bad a person you are he is looking at what kind of a seeker you are and he is aware that this good and bad is created by your mind and you are in trouble because of this good and bad you are facing this karma because you are trapped master is coming to take us out of the trap not to judge what is happening within the trap and that is why the perfect living master's pull is a little different 
and when we notice that there is no judgment involved it's consistent always so that affects us more so that is why they say while a perfect living master who has initiated you is still in his human form and still living spend as much time as you can in terms of his company and watch this pool every time you will see the pool will be growing inside you because you watch more how a perfect living master interacts with you and tell him all your complaints tell him how bad you are and see how he loves you <laughs> that's a key the key is he is no judgment at all that's a very big thing that affects people and that is why they get pulled there is a, a great master was asked by an american disciple master how often should we come and see you he said the ideal would be to see me every day and the disciple said master i live so far away how can we come every day he said if you don't live here but live outside then you can come once a week and when this question answer was going on my grandfather who had become a disciple after my father and it was a strange experience also my grandfather was sitting there when he heard that if you are li living outside and he was living about 25 miles away from the dera he said you should come once a week after that date he was there every week and every week just because of that hint he gave the american disciple said master what about people living very far away like other countries he said if you are really very far away and can't afford more frequent trips once a month is okay he said master the united states so far away how can we come once a month he said if you so far away like another country like america once a year is good enough he said master what about those who cannot afford to come even once a year chris master smiled and he said there's always a next life available for them <laughs> so he emphasized the importance the importance of the company of the master it is then only in the company of the master we realize what true love is what the pull of a master is the pull of a master is so unconditional so beautiful there is nothing like it can someone who has not been initiated by a plm reach sach khan true home are there any other methods <clears throat> there can be other methods i am not aware of them i don't claim to have knowledge of all the methods of going to such khand i don't even know somebody can question me maybe there is a higher place than such khand how do you know that is our true home all kind of questions can be raised these are all questions of the mind at the physical level once you go in these questions will disappear you will find that the answers come automatically all the question that you can ever ask the answers are inside you not outside these are questions we ask outside just for the sake of satisfying the curiosity of our mind and and that is why we put these questions how can we reach in other means also you can reach many levels of enlightenment without a perfect living master with some kind of masters who are not perfect living masters you can even reach the astral stage you can reach heavens and hells you can see them you can go with some very advanced masters you can go to the causal plane and see your universal mind in which your mind is merely participating as a unit without separating from the universal mind it's a very big experience some masters can give that but to go to true home satchand according to my experience my knowledge whatever knowledge i have you need be acceptance or initiation by a perfect living master who is operating from such kind does the angel of death come for initiate and initiates family members and pets who have passed on the angels of death come to take us in our disembodied state which is determined by what our karma for this life is whatever actions we have done 
whatever intentions we have expressed they are all registered on our mind and our mind creates the experience of an angel of death coming and they are described in almost every religion that how they come and take you and they judge you what you have been doing and depending upon you have done very good work go to heaven you done very bad work go to hell otherwise we'll send you to other forms of life other forms of existence or put you back in another life as a human being to correct the mistakes that you make and learn something more so far as initiates are concerned initiates of perfect living master no angels of death ever come the master appears always this is a guaranteed thing in the death of a initiate of a perfect living master the master appears not only appears after death he can appear before death he can even show you your death before you have died and there are instances where people saw and got separated from the body which was dying and saw it dying so in the case of initiates of a perfect living master there is no question of any angel of death coming but when you are initiated by a perfect living master your influence on the other souls around you who are connected to you by your karmas is immense they say that you can if you were initiated by a perfect living master seven generations benefit from that one single initiation somebody asked that master master when you talk of seven generations are you talking of the future seven generations or the past seven generations he said what's the difference they are the same people rolling ro ro <laughs> <laughs> same people coming again and again in the same family same connections <laughs> so it it can apply both ways but eventually all people who are connected with you benefit including pets benefit your master hazur baba sawan singh is commonly referred to as great master how did he come to be called great master i think he should have been called the greatest master <laughs> i call him the greatest master he is called great master because of various things one his style of delivering the message spiritual message was so direct that you could feel he is speaking from such kind and not speaking from what he had learned from the books his reference to books was only for the scholar sitting there and he was talking directly from the experiences and this is a great sign of a great master that when he talks he doesn't give the impression he is talking from some books he has learned from he is talking from his experience great master gave that impression to everybody who listened to him and it was a great with authority actually if you see in the bible when jesus christ gave his sermon on the mount at the end it says there was a hush upon the multitude for he spake like one with authority and not like the scribes it's a true sign one who is speaking with true knowledge does not need to have memories of something that he saw or, mem or memories of what he read it direct experiences these people are having so that is why he never used any notes for his discourses he never referred to anything else for telling people he never took time to answer their questions they came directly from his knowing and that is why he was called great master recognized and when we went to other masters we saw many masters i have seen so many in my life all over the world seen masters they read they tell where to where to read more they tell you how to do things and then they say i did it some time long ago so there's a big difference in the authority with which a perfect living master speaks and he spoke with such authority that everybody started calling him great master so i call him the greatest master how does one keep the connection with the sound <clears throat> when we use the word sound it can mean many things to many people Shakespeare talks of sound and fury signifying nothing so we think that we all make noises the noises also sound 
has no meaning. And when we make them into words and we make it into language, they begin to have meaning. Music is not words, but has meaning. Music affects us. They are all sounds. But there is no sound like the sound of the self. And people are not aware of it. That there is a music coming from our own self. It is generated from consciousness. It is not generated from our physical self. It is not generated from our astral self. It is not generated from our mind. It is generated from our soul, our true self. Now, it is not sound as we know it. The whole creative power, we need a word for that. Whole creative power of the ultimate self, totality of self, what do you call it? I have no word for it. I am trying to figure some word. I sometimes use a very limited word, totality of consciousness. doesn't mean much to me. But then when I see, how does it work? How does a totality of the creative power sitting in each one of us, sitting in our heads, how does it operate? It operates by becoming very different at different levels of consciousness. When it comes down to a physical body that we are wearing, it becomes like an audible sound, which can be heard. It's amazing that you can hear your own self. Now that requires third eye center, put your attention and listen. Listening is the key to hearing that sound. If you are a good listener, you hear the sound. So long as the mind is scattered over all the things that are happening in the world, you won't hear the sound. You will hear outside sounds. But when you gather your attention in meditation behind the eyes, you can always hear the sound. In fact, you will hear many distracting sounds also. There was a Japanese meditator I met at one conference and he said, I am creating a special meditation chamber in my ashram in, near Tokyo where I am blocking all external sound so that only internal sound will be visible, will be audible. I said, I like to visit that ashram. So I went there. In just about 25, 30 miles outside of Tokyo, he had a small little ashram and he was a Zen practitioner, but he was also doing other kinds of practices. And he had built a glass little cave, which he called the cave, a glass cave completely soundproof. Even the air that was put in was made to cover its sound and then go in just enough for us to breathe inside. No sound. I said, I like to get in. So I sat inside that. I could hear my heart beat like I never heard before. I could hear my breathing and so many gurgling sounds from my belly, <laughs> which are going on all the time. I discovered there is no place where you can be totally quiet. I have not found any place in the world where you can say, this is a quiet place. Chirping of birds, something, even insects can be heard if you are in a complete quiet thing. Therefore, a sound is a necessary thing for existence. You will be surprised to see how sound in its initial form, which is not like a sound, a creative power, is a creating everything. When you discover the possibility of listening to your own sound, you are just finding your own self. And that's beautiful. Because how else will you know who you are? When you put your attention inside and hear the sound of your own self, it does not come from anywhere higher or lower or sides. It does not come from right or left. It comes from you and looks like a surround sound, like it's all around you. Sometimes it feels like it's surrounding the whole universe around you when you start hearing it. The sound resembles some external sounds. Beginning, it resembles a bell sound, large bell, a long bell, peal. And since we, I have sometimes suspicion that that is why bells have been used in churches and belfries and why bells are all the time used in temples and so on. And there's something about sound which has been used in religious places we have built out. So that sound that comes inside has a pull in it, pulls you to your own self. 
according to me that's the greatest shortcut to discovering yourself listening to the sound of your own self when you hear that sound and put your attention on it you're putting attention on yourself the fastest way of withdrawal people use artificial sound like repetition of mantras that's also a sound we repeat in the mind we are creating a sound we hear supposing you are repeating words and not listening to it it has no effect at all if your mind is running around thinking of other things and you are repeating words with your tongue or even with your mind and the rest of the mind is thinking of other things it does not lead to any concentration of attention but if you hear the sound of your own self there is no problem it pulls you to yourself and is the fastest way of withdrawing your attention to yourself and becoming unaware of this body and becoming aware of the inner self so the sound plays an important role it has been called a different kind of sound this speech that i am making is also sound the words i am using in the indian language we call it varnatmak shabd shabd means sound varnatmak means that which can be spoken varna written spoken expressed that's the language i'm using to talk to you this is also sound when you hear inside it's just like a music so then we call it from varnatmak we shift to dhonatmak sound so at the early first stage it become dhonatmak sound like a music then when you go to the next stage it's a very different experience of the sound you get into the sound as if you have been always hearing but you were not there when you enter the causal plane the sound can be heard continuous sound no break not like a bell is a continuous sound and they are trying to refer to that sound by using the word om om is just a word but some practitioners try to use the word om in the sense of the sound inside by starting with a little hum in their mouth mm om so long as they can hold their breath they trying to copy something that's continuous there but the beauty of it is that when you are there you don't feel you just started hearing it you feel you were always hearing it is always there part of you that's also the same sound when you go to the next higher step there you find you are the sound that the self as a soul is sound so they call these sounds they call this the varnatmak next one dhonatmak third one they call anhad there are no limits either side and then they call sar shabd that means true sound true sound is our own soul when you go to the top the sound is the truth so therefore it's amazing how the setup has been made that the truth can be discovered and come down to the physical plane in the physical uh, head you can hear it like a regular sound so that's why this particular yoga of discovering yourself has been called surt shabd yoga surt means attention shabd means sound yoga means union with your own true self so surt shabd yoga or the putting attention on the sound can lead you to the highest place one more question <clears throat> can the dvd be changed <laughs> of course people change every day just like you can change a dvd you can change the dvd which created your destiny i have given this example that your destiny was picked up by you at the causal plane like you pick up a dvd and play it we are playing our dvds and that is our life but you don't change the, if the dvd has a player in it the player can't change the dvd he is part of the dvd of the play you say this character can change the dvd of course not dvd was placed by me not by the character you play any dvd the dvd can't change you can change it similarly you who chose the dvd at the point when you chose the dvd can change the dvd at that point which is the causal plane and you will be surprised how many successful meditators who have gone there with the ability to change the dvd never changed it they like the one they had thank you very much i hope to see you again next month